Welcome back to Landmark Cases in a Nutshell. Today we'll be covering New York Times versus Sullivan. In this case, the court declared that public officials must prove actual malice in order to recover damages for defamatory statements relating to their official conduct. In 1960, the New York Times published a full-page advertisement purchased by a coalition of civil rights leaders that portrayed violent and illegal measures taken by officials in southern states. The ad was intended to look like an editorial and included a description of the mistreatment of African-American students protesting in Montgomery, Alabama by state authorities. Though he was not specifically named, the Montgomery City Public Safety Commissioner, L.B. Sullivan, felt that the criticism of his subordinates reflected on him and damaged his reputation. He decided to sue the New York Times for libel in Alabama State Court. Libel is the legal term for defamatory words published in writing, as opposed to slander, which is defamatory words spoken out loud. In order to sue for defamation, the statements about the plaintiff must be false. Though the statements in the ad were mostly true, there were a few minor factual inaccuracies and exaggerations, which allowed Sullivan to sue for libel. The jury in the state trial court sided with Sullivan, and he was awarded $500,000 in damages. The Times appealed, claiming First Amendment protection, but the Alabama Supreme Court affirmed the decision. The Times appealed again, this time to the Supreme Court of the United States, which granted cert. The court had to consider whether the First Amendment allows a public official to bring a defamation case for false statements about public issues, and whether Alabama's libel law, which disregarded intention, violated the First Amendment's protection of the press. In a unanimous decision written by Justice Brennan, the Supreme Court sided with the New York Times and ruled that Alabama's libel law infringed on the First Amendment's freedom of the press and freedom of speech. Brennan wrote that debate on public issues should be uninhibited, robust, and wide open, and that harsh criticism of public officials and journalistic mistakes were part of the price that a democratic society must pay for freedom. If any news source or individual could easily be held liable for defaming a public official, nobody would want to criticize public officials out of fear, which would have adverse effects on democracy and society. This is known as a chilling effect. To avoid this chilling effect, the court decided to adopt a federal rule that made it significantly harder for public officials to recover damages from defamation suits. This rule is the actual malice test, which requires public officials suing for defamation to prove knowledge of falsity or reckless disregard for the truth in order to recover damages. Knowledge of falsity is exactly what it sounds like. The plaintiff must prove that the defamer knew that what they said or published was false, but spread that information anyway. To prove reckless disregard for the truth, the plaintiff must show that their defamer did not make an effort to determine if information was true or entertain serious doubts about a statement's accuracy. An example of reckless disregard for the truth would be publishing that a member of Congress was involved in a hit and run when your only source for that information was a man with dementia who suffers from delusions. As you might imagine, actual malice is difficult to prove, which grants more protection to speech and the press. Since there was no evidence that the New York Times knowingly published false information or acted with reckless disregard for the truth, it could not be held liable for libel. Therefore, the court reversed the Supreme Court of Alabama's ruling and dismissed $500,000 in damages awarded to Sullivan. Since 1964, the court has declared that actual malice also applies to public figures, like celebrities. But private figures are still not required to meet this standard to recover damages for defamation suits. The decision has become quite controversial over time, with some current justices even indicating that they believe the case should be revisited and possibly overturned. But for now, the actual malice standard is still in place. Alright, that's all for this case. Thanks for watching and leave any questions you have in the comments.